Hello everyone, and thank you for checking out Rex Engine. This series of quick start guides will show you just how easily a playable project can be created and how flexible your options are for setting up new objects, testing your controls, and swapping out major gameplay mechanics. In this tutorial, we will set up a new project using mechanics similar to a Mario game. The first thing we'll want to do from a new scene is go to Tools, Rex Engine, set up level scene, and click the play button. Once the scene loads, you'll see that we already have a default character to play with, but we'll want to swap this one out with our own. To do that, we can go to Game Object, Create Rex Engine, Create Blank Player. We'll then want to give the player object a new name and drag it to an appropriate project folder to save it. Next, we'll need to drag an instance of the Singleton's object into the hierarchy so we can make changes to it. The Singleton's object controls a great deal of information about the overall project, but at the moment we just need to open the game manager. This contains the player prefab that will be loaded when the scene starts. To replace the default option with our new player object, drag the player from the project folder into the prefab slot. Then click Apply to save this change. We can then remove the Singleton's and new player objects from the hierarchy and click Play. You'll see here that we still have a character on screen to play with, but if you look in the hierarchy, that character is now the player object we just created. If you open this object and go to Controllers, Controller, you'll see many options in the inspector related to player movement and other properties. The controller is where we'll be able to adjust all sorts of properties on the player to create the set of mechanics we need for our game. First, let's have a look at the Moving State script. To set up our character to feel similar to a Mario game, we'll need to adjust most of the variables shown here, so let's start with Speed. We can change this variable while the scene is playing so we can test out different values and see how they feel before we select one. Keep in mind that what we're selecting right now is only the walking speed. Next we'll want to work with acceleration. While many platformers make no use of this, Mario in particular relies heavily on acceleration for its gameplay. We'll want to pick a value that makes it difficult for the player to change direction quickly, but not so much as to feel too slippery or limiting. In this example, we're setting acceleration and deceleration to the same value so that the movement feels consistent, but they can also be changed separately. Now we'll want to add the ability to run. We can adjust the run variables the same way, but first we want to make sure that the can run option is checked. We'll want to find a run speed that feels significantly faster than the walking speed, but not so fast that the player won't be able to react to threats in front of them. We now have a good value for the run speed, but we need to make sure the player accelerates appropriately as it does for the walk. To fix that, we just need to set the acceleration and deceleration variables for run to the same values. We'll now see a smooth transition between the walk and run speeds when the run button is held. Now let's have a look at our jump. If you scroll down to the jump state script, you'll see two variables that we need to work with, speed and max frames. Speed will affect how quickly the player moves upwards over time, while max frames determines how long that effect can be applied while the player holds the button. Let's try changing the speed first. You can see here that as the value increases, the peak of the player's jump will be higher, but the player reaches it in the same amount of time. Now let's change max frames. You'll see here that the player's upward speed remains consistent, while the amount of time that the player can hold the button to continue moving upward is increasing.
Now we have a good set of values for our character, with walking, running, and jumping working smoothly together. To permanently store these values on the character, we'll need to remember what we've set them to, then click the play button, and drag our character into the hierarchy. Now open the controller, set all the values the way you'd like them to be, and click apply. Now you can delete the player instance from the hierarchy and click the play button. You'll see here that the scene now generates our character with all the values we've set to it. There's still one more thing we'll need to add. Click the play button, drag the character out from the hierarchy, and go to the controller. If we scroll down in the inspector, we'll see that there is a crouch state. This is created with the player object by default, but I'll remove it here so you can see how to add it in. I also remove the bounce state, as we'll be working with this later in the tutorial. To give the crouch ability to our player, go to Tools, Rex Engine, Add Ability, and Add Crouching. You will now see the crouch state script appear in the inspector. We can now click apply, remove the player object from the hierarchy, and click play to try it out. So let's look at what happened here. If we had pressed down before we had removed the default crouch state, we would have seen the player crouch. Right now, the player is not doing so because the crouch state we just added does not have all the information it needs by default. We'll need to change a few more things in the controller before we can use this ability. We can see here that the crouch has no animation to use when the player activates this ability. To add one, we'll need to go to the Animation folder, open Booster, which is our default character, and drag his crouch animation into the animation box. We also need something for the moving animation. This can be set to something unique if the player has a crawling state, but for our Mario example, we only need one frame for crouching regardless of whether the character is moving, so we will use the same animation. While we're here, we also want to check Will Rise with Button Release so that the player stands up when we let go of the button, and Uncheck Immediately Kill Deceleration on Crouch so that the player can retain some momentum and slide during a crouch. Now we can click Apply, remove the character instance from the hierarchy, and click Play. And with that, we have everything we need for basic Mario controls. To continue with this project, check out the next video where we'll cover creating enemies and basic objects. Thank you for having a look at how Rex Engine can help you build games, and we'll see you next time.